Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 200 of our trip around the United States. That's right, we have been at this steadily for 200 days now. And if you're surprised that we've been managing to stay on track or even a little ahead for the last 200 days, imagine my surprise that the plan has actually gone off for the most part without any major delays and everything has been running relatively smoothly. This morning, we are getting our morning start off here in Sterling City. This is as far north as we are pressing on our route out of Austin. We have 350 miles to cover today, and for the most part, we're gonna be making our way south. But first, we're gonna pop over west to get into Rankin before we start heading back south and east through Ozona and then bring our day to an end in Rock Springs. Our target list for the day is almost entirely traditionals. It looks like it's all easy parking grabs and I could not be any happier about that. It is warmer today, slightly. Rather than starting off at 16 degrees, we're starting off at 18. And rather than finishing the day at 26 degrees, it might make it all the way up to 32. I'm very glad for all the parking grabs today because with the temperature the way it was, if we had any hikes like we were supposed to yesterday, I'd be cutting them anyway. So for the most part, I think we'll be able to progress through our target list as is without having to make any slices. But there's only one way to see how it's gonna turn out. Let's go hit the road and see for ourselves. Come on, let's go. As we start into our route for the day, covering the gap between Sterling City and Rankin, the landscape began to take a slow and subtle change from hill country to flat desert landscape. Really, it doesn't even feel like I'm in the same state anymore. I dropped out of the hill country after that long drive and now it's just flat desert all around me. Where I was in the hills yesterday all day long with snow on the ground, I haven't seen the barest hint of snow here and I suspect it's warmed up a couple of degrees. Not by that much, but still counting on yesterday being the coldest day we'll have ever had on this trip. Even though it felt as if we had experienced a major change in elevation coming out of hill country, that was simply not the case. It was still right around 22 to 2300 feet. The difference was, instead of rolling through the hills, now we were rolling through flat landscape with buttes all around us in the distance. Beside all of the buttes off in the distance, there really just was not that much to see along this lonely stretch of road. Every so often, we would pass through a small town and there would be something interesting to check out, but most of these towns weren't even big enough for a gas station. It did not take long before the long drive exhausted Aichan. I would hate to interrupt her afternoon nap. She is passed out hard, just enjoying the weather right now. It's warmed up just enough that when we crack the windows, it's a cool, refreshing breeze rather than in your face, frigid cold. She's a happy dog back here. Coming through Pecos County, we found ourselves in the small town of Iran with a population of right around 1,000 people. Here we stopped in to the very odd Aleut Park in Fantasyland, named for a comic strip created by local resident V.T. Hamilton. Within the park, you will find several displays celebrating the town's history as an oil boom town. For a while, the town's population had boomed after the discovery of the Yates oil field in the 1920s. The main draw of the park is the giant recreations of characters from that 1930s alley-oop comic strip. The other side of this dinosaur has a rickety ladder you can climb on his neck for pictures, but I would not recommend climbing on this giant monkey. He does not look too friendly at all. We have a new record for the least welcoming looking museum I've ever seen. Private property, no trespassing, keep out. Usually, museums want you to come in and check the place out, not tell you, don't come in here. But don't worry, I'm not gonna go tour this one. Now, I think it is well past time that we get out there and start finding some geocaches for the day. When you see a rock pile like that, it can really only mean one thing. As it turns out, the rock pile would be the key indicator of the large majority of geocaches that we would find throughout the day. More than half of the ground zeros that we would pull up to, I would do a quick search of the area, spot a pile of rocks or rock at the base of a signpost and immediately move over for the find. This made the caching go by very quickly as I knew just where to look each time I arrived. 
That's not to say I didn't have help when I needed it, though. Ai-chan woke up from her afternoon nap and wanted to participate. Good girl, you are so good at this game. That's right, it is right there. Can always count on Ai-chan to let me know where the geocache is. With Ai-chan helpfully sniffing out the last places the people had been, it was fairly easy to track down the geocaches, even when they weren't highlighted by a pile of rocks. The other thing that we saw quite a bit of today was micros placed into or hanging within trees. If you add up all of our hides in trees and all of our hides under piles of rocks, I would say that made up fully 95% of our finds for the day. Every now and then though, we would be surprised by something a little different, like this preform hanging in the fence post. And our most difficult find of the day, a magnetic on a signpost, but not your normal kind of mag key holder. Instead, it was a flat magnet with a log on the backside. My favorite part of the long drive through the desert landscape today was the stretch between Iran and Ozona along Highway 190. Several parts of this road featured drives through road cuts on either side, offering a contrast to the buttes we'd been seeing all day. Our very first stop upon reaching Ozona was the Crockett County Interpretive Trail in Visitor Center Park. While it is certainly a small trail, it is definitely worth a stop. Not only does it feature a geocache, but it is also a wonderful collection of native plant material that would be seen within 100 miles of the city. The trail stresses the importance of rainwater conservation and collection. With both enjoyment and education in mind, it also features over 200 plants representing over 75 species. As the county seat of Crockett County, along the south end of Ozona's Town Square, you will find a memorial to Davy Crockett. I instantly fell in love with the quote inscribed at the bottom of this granite statue. Be sure you're right, and then go ahead. Ai Chun's favorite treat on the road, chicken jerky. Sometimes she gives me dirty looks when I give it to other dogs, but she should know by now, I never run out. When this bag starts to run low, I go out and I make sure I have another, and I already have a spare bag right in the car because this is starting to run low. But she always loves these things. Are you ready for a piece of chicken jerky, Ai Chen? Yes, you are. Here, here you go, sweet girl. Seemingly endless hours spent driving on the road are made so much better in the company of a great geo dog like Ai Chan. Throughout the day, she will frequently rotate between her princess room in the back, the passenger seat, and the passenger floorboards. When she's sitting up in the passenger seat, she wants to be paying attention to what's going on around her. But when she gets comfortable and lays down, then she's ready for me to start petting her. We both really like the spot right along her neck behind her ears. It's super soft to pet and it's definitely her favorite spot to be petted. Being on the road with her right next to me affords me endless hours of opportunity to continue to pet her as we drive along the long, lonely roads. I'm fairly certain that this is actually her favorite part of being on the road geocaching with me. Our final stop of the day is the last small town we would be seeing today, Rock Springs, the county seat of Edwards County, with a population of right around a thousand people. It was so named for the natural springs associated with the porous limestone rocks in the area. On the edge of town, angled toward US 377, you will find the Edwards County Veterans Memorial. The four square granite towers feature the names of no wars, but instead the names of veterans who have died in defense of their country, broken down by each branch of service. Recognized as the Angora goat capital of the world, it comes as little surprise that Rock Springs economy is centered on wool and the mohair industry, and a geocache or two as well. Well, we actually managed to do it. We hit our goal for today before the sun finished setting. We covered all 350 miles of our route today. We began our day in Sterling City, in front of the courthouse, and now we get to end our day in Rock Springs, in front of the courthouse. The road between Sterling City and Rock Springs has been a lot of empty, lonely, desert roads. Everything that we did today was parking grabs, and every single find 
was five minutes or less. I Chun and I would cover 30, 40 miles at a time, get into the county, bam, one, two, three, find the geocaches in rapid succession, 30, 40 minutes to the next county. That was the flavor of the day all day long, and each one of those seemed to be hidden under a rock of some sort. So once we got there, like doing the ET run, all we did was look for the rock pile, and there was the cache just waiting for us to find it. We're gonna go ahead and skip a few counties ahead tonight and get ourselves into Kerrville, and Kerrville is actually where we're gonna stop and be ready to start again tomorrow. It's been a great day getting to know Aichan and getting to enjoy some time on the road. Thank you guys for joining us on this adventure moving south through Texas. Like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails.